For good reason, pickup trucks were the most obstinate in the transition to electric vehicles. Their use cases are distinct, diverse, and more difficult than those of a car or SUV. They must tow, howl, and go off-road in addition to commuting, all of which require vastly different skill sets. They're also the best-selling vehicles in America as well as huge profit and loyalty generators for their manufacturers. Ford had no choice but to get its first ever electric truck right, which it did with the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. The Lightning is without a doubt one of the most important pickup trucks vehicles really in history. Forget about early adopters, eco warriors, and technophiles. This truck must persuade construction workers, farmers, ranchers, surveyors, and everyday truck enthusiasts that electric pickups are not only feasible, but also desirable. That an EV truck can not only do the job, but do it better. That is what it does. To get down to business, the Lightning is the best driving, best riding, and best handling F-150 available. The only reasons not to buy one over a gas or diesel powered F-150 are that you don't have anywhere to change it or, you know, to charge it at home. That you can regularly tow hundreds of miles at a time or that you simply don't like or won't let yourself like electric vehicles. Give this video a giant thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss any future videos. 5 second sprint. You can't possibly complain about the power. Even with a small battery, the base truck produces 452 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque, making it the most powerful F-150 short of the big battery model. And it cooks. A mid 5 second sprint to 60 miles per hour is estimated by Ford and it feels conservative behind the wheel. It's already as fast as the fastest combustion powered F-150 with no waiting for engines to rev, turbos to spool, or gears to be swapped. You can put your foot down at any time and it will jump forward. And what about the 580 horsepower big battery bruiser? Ford claims mid force to 60 miles per hour, but it feels faster than that. Drop that hammer and it will even slightly torque steer, especially if you have weight in the bed or on the hitch. Put enough weight in the back, like 1,500 pounds of polywood or plywood we hauled, which was 67% of the maximum payload, and it'll chirp the front tires every time you step on the gas. Aside from that, towing and hauling are unimportant. Instantaneous maximum torque indicates that the truck is ready to move any amount of weight immediately, whether from a stop or a roll. We dragged 9,500 pounds of winemaking equipment around Texas Hill Country, and the Lightning barely noticed the weight. Yes, towing a trailer effectively cuts your range in half, but let's get into that. For one thing, depending on a battery size, the Lightning can travel between 230 to 320 miles on a single charge, which equates 115 to 160 miles towing and 2 to 3 hours of driving. Second, our experience in Ford's instrumented testing show that towing with a combustion power truck also cuts your range in half, so the issue isn't one of the range of, but of charging. The good news is that the truck uses every piece of data it can determine your instantaneous range, from weather to topography to optional onboard scales. And charging? That is one of the Lightning's few obvious flaws. Its maximum charging rate of 150 kW isn't as fast as the Rivian R1T and GMC Hummer EV, the only other electric trucks on the market right now, which both exceed 200 kW or even 300 in some cases. Ford engineers argue that they have spent a significant amount of time working on the charging curve in order to keep charging speed as high as possible rather than peaking and falling off. Despite the truck's ability to charge at a faster rate up to 90% before tapering, whereas most EVs begin to taper after 80%. They refuse to comment on potential software updates that might raise the charging rate in the future. The real issue with towing is the current lack of public fast charging stations, particularly pull-through stations where you can charge without dropping your trailer. This is a problem with infrastructure that is being addressed by both private companies and government action, but the growing pains will continue until all of the planned charges are built. Almost perfect. It's worth noting, however, how well Ford did what it had, and what they did it with. The Lightning is larger than the Rivian R1T, but it weighs less and travels the same distance on a comparable battery pack. Furthermore, Ford made only minor aerodynamic changes to the F-150 body, preferring to keep the truck as familiar and functional as possible. The 5.5-foot bed is functionally identical to that found on the other 5 
150 Super Cruise, and it accepts all, all of the same aftermarket accessories. The frunk, front truck, storage area is enormous and simple to load, and the cheap looking chunk of shiny gray plastic that serves as a grill is a small price to pay for that convenience. Returning to practicality, the Lightning is without a doubt the best riding and handling F-150 you can buy, thanks to its fully independent suspension, near ideal weight balance, and low center of gravity, all of which are inherent to it being an EV. We wouldn't call it the Lightning Sporty, but steering is sharper and its poise far superior to that of a combustion-powered F-Series truck. It's not that you can't have a good time with the Lightning. Turn off traction and stability control if you want to go do some donuts. The computer will allow you to get good and sideways, but it will intervene if it believes the truck is about to roll over. Just like in a combustion-powered model, the ride is a little more difficult, the Lightning rides well on no surfaces, it's especially noticeable off-road where ditching the heavy live rear axle has improved comfort dramatically. The truck appears to be more at ease and confident, the disadvantage is in the damping. When you hit a large dip or some long rolling bumps, the truck becomes light and floaty on the rebound. When you hit a stretch of highway with a lot of expansion joints, it feels like the truck never fully settles. We hoped that putting weight in the bed or on the hitch would help, but it only alleviated the pain. The Lightning is clearly not intended to be an electric Raptor, despite how well it rides off-road. With 8.9 inches off ground clearance, it's roughly the same as the regular 4x4F 150 with an FX4 off-road package. That big, low-hanging battery does nothing for the breakover angle. However, the electric motor's fine throttle control, especially in off-road mode, allows you to maximize traction at all times. It also allows for some pedal overlap which is necessary for smooth crawling. The manual rear differential and brake-based torque vectoring will get you out of most situations that a truck with this clearance and these optional mild all-terrain tires can get you into. Armor for batteries. Don't be concerned about the battery. It's shielded by a six-piece skid plate that runs nearly the entire length of the truck. It's also sealed, giving the truck a wadding depth of 24 inches. If you happen to damage or wear out the battery, you can remove it from the bottom of the truck by loosening only eight bolts. The range of the battery depends on speed, terrain, exterior temperature, the amount of weight you're carrying, driving style, and whether you use features like the one pedal driving mode. We love one pedal driving in which lifting the accelerator activates significant regenerative braking. We'd prefer if the Lightning's regenerative braking was a little more aggressive. The feel and response of the brake pedal are neither good nor bad. It's numb, but it bites quickly and easily stops this 6,200 to 6,600 pound truck. Home power is an excellent example of a clever trick. Now that we've returned to charging, Let's take a look at Ford's Pro Power on board and Charge Station Pro features, which are both extremely useful. The first you're probably familiar with because it's standard on the other F-150s, but its functionality is worth emphasizing. The 9.6 kW power system is in the bed with four 120 volt outlets and a 30 amp 240 volt outlet, plus four more 120 volt plugs in the front and two in the cab. It's a game changer. The sheer number of appliances, power tools, and devices that can be powered and or charged by the truck rather than a portable generator is a selling point in of itself. This truck is a mobile construction site. Charge Station Pro, a level 2 charger that can install in your home or office, is the next step up. It runs at 80 amps and it's connected to the internet so it can monitor your electricity rates and charge the truck when it'll cost you the least. Paired with an inverter from Sunrun, Charge Station Pro can also reverse the flow of electricity using the charge stored in the Lightning to power your entire home during a blackout for up to 3 days, running flat out or up to 11 days, while metering power output. On a typical day, the setup can float power between the truck and your house, supplementing your home with great electricity when it's expensive and charging when it's cheap. The charger and inverter are only $3,895, and if you purchase a large battery, Ford includes the charger for free. That is only your home. Ford Pro can provide a quote for a complete commercial setup that takes into account fleet size, 
operating radius and operating hours to maximize range and uptime, which is extremely necessary. The trucks can be fully charged with their batteries and interiors heated or cooled as needed whenever a shift begins. All things considered, Ford estimates that the operating cost of a Lightning Pro are 20% lower than those of a combustion-powered F-150. With the exception of, as good as all that sounds, the truck's actual pricing is a mixed bag. The Lightning Pro work truck is the deal of the century, costing just under $42,000 before government incentives. All of this power, capability, and features at that price, especially when the average transaction price of a new vehicle approaches $50,000, is an absolute steal. Even the XLT, at just the under $55,000 rate, is an excellent value. The Lariant and Platinum models add more high-tech features, but the benefits become diminishing. At higher prices, the Lightning's interior cleans up well, but only to point. We're used to $93,000 interiors as is Ford's Lincoln division. The Lightning Platinum's interior is not worth nearly six figures. The material's quality is simply lacking and a touchscreen from a $44,000 Mustang Mach-E is insufficient to compensate. Ram has been making nicer interiors for years and its trucks don't cost anywhere near that much. The good news is that Ford supports the Lightning. The warranty on the EV specific parts is 8 years and 100,000 miles, which is 3 years and 20,000 miles longer than the powertrain warranty on the combustion powered F 150s. Ford engineers also tell us that the Lightning went through the same durability torture testing as any other F 150. In some cases, the testing was more severe to ensure that no one could claim this is a lesser vehicle. Given the unwavering popularity of trucks in America, it's difficult to overstate how critical it was for a segment leader like Ford to nail the electric pickup. If the Lightning had been a flop, it could have set the industry back years, if not decades. Instead, Ford has risen to the occasion and created a great pickup truck that also happens to be a great EV, as well as clever charging capabilities. The Lightning is a truck we needed at the right time. That's all we've got for you. Would you like to have these EV and have a fantastic experience? Give this video a giant thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss any future videos. Which EV do you think is the most incredible? Please join in and let us know what you think in the comments section below.